no doubt, no hesitation, take Luka Doncic with the number one overall pick. Luka Doncic is the guard wing 2-3 from Real Madrid and Barcelona. He's eight, what is he, 18, 19 years old. He spent the last three or four years since he's 16 playing professional basketball against men. Men. Much higher level than NCAA. And as I saw Bill Simmons tweet out, much higher level than watching seven foot prospects shoot against five foot nine trainers standing still. Because that's what we get against most of these NBA prospects. We get things like Yi Jin Ling. Probably younger. So, you, you know, taking their rookie seasons alone as evidence, you might have an argument between Blake Griffin and Luka Doncic. But I don't think that's how we can judge who is the best rookie since LeBron James. I think that's part of it. I think the other part is, where do you feel like the arrow was pointing for this particular player? Mm -hmm. And I think with Luka, to all the reasons that, that Ryan laid out, the arrow is going so high up. It doesn't feel like the thing everybody said about him when he came out, that he's already at his ceiling. Blake suffered not just from having one of his best seasons of his career, mm -hmm. his rookie year, the league changed out from under Blake as it was happening. The league moved out to the three-point arc. The league became big men need to be able to stretch the floor. Right after, the Golden State Warriors happened right after Blake right. did this as a rookie. Luka feels like he's ahead of where the NBA is going. Like how Ryan laid it out, he's versatile, he's big, he can run an offense. I've never seen the kind of vision he has. I mean, I, you've seen it. LeBron obviously had it as well. Right. But his brain seems to be on a three-second fast-forward loop of everybody else. He knows the right play to make. And I think this is the most important part. And again, I think you said a lot of these things, Ryan. He has that special thing, man. He's clutch. Before they started tanking, he led. He was up towards the top of the league in clutch shooting to win a game in the last five minutes. And he's got a special move. That step back three, I mean, he's as a rookie, he's already got the things that we go, wow, James Harden has that. important that the Phoenix Suns don't mess this up. He's right there in Arizona. He's right down the road. You need a box office attraction who can flat out ball, who's a big boy, the size, the athleticism, and the combination of all of those things with his gifts that you simply can't teach. I don't give a damn about how this kid in Europe looks. I understand he's a 6'8 point guard. He's surreal. He'll probably be the number two overall pick. But if it were anybody else, of course you take those things into consideration. But in in Phoenix, considering the level of ineptitude that they have raked that city with in terms of its basketball product that they put out on the floor, DeAndre Ayton, there is nothing to think about. There is nothing to talk about. There is nothing to debate. There is absolutely nothing to consider. You have to take DeAndre Ayton with the number one overall pick because you are the Phoenix Suns. Anybody else, you can debate it. You can throw it up in the air. But my God what they have been subjected to in terms of their basketball product since the days that Steve Nash and Mike D'Antoni left. I mean, come on. You've got to take this kid number one Where? overall. If I'm the Phoenix Suns, I change my phone line. I cut it off. I don't talk to anybody. I'm not answering anybody. I'm not entertaining anything, Max. I'm taking DeAndre Ayton. I'm not even talking to anybody about it. Uh... Want to see the rookie of the year? It ain't DeAndre Ayton in Phoenix, regardless of what happened when he dropped 23 and 18 last night in Boston. It's this kid, Luka Doncic. That's who it is. The rookie of the year to be. This kid is special. This kid is sensational. He really, really is. Just 19 years of age. First they found Dirk Nowitzki 20 years ago, and now they found this kid. This kid is special. office appeal you think he may have none of those things in the end matter the only thing that matters is getting the best player and while once upon a time i was convinced that was clearly deandre ayton i am no longer convinced because of his performance in the tournament maybe i'm being a prisoner of the moment but i saw things Stephen a he's more athletic than okafor but like okafor may not be as ideally suited to the modern game or the postmodern game if you want to call it that than some of the other guys in this draft. And I'm not talking about Doncic, who apparently doesn't react well to pressure on the ball. No, not, not, not great if he's going to be a primary ball handler. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about either one of those guys. I look at guys like Jaron Jackson and Wendell Carter, 
Uh, and, I, and I see guys there that are more like the best players that have come out of the draft recently. You think about Jason Tatum or even watching the Celtics. Think about Al Horford. I see guys who can switch on screens, who can who play consistent and excellent, like ubiquitous defense. They're everywhere all the time. Long athletes. I see guys with, um, at, at least in, in Wendell Carter's case, some offensive polish too. Uh, and in both cases, real offensive upside. I see much more of the kind of modern kind of star than I do in either Ayton or Donkic, to tell you the truth. Though I haven't seen much of Donkic other than the video that, you know, that, that, that we've all seen. The point is that I think when, people, when you have the number one overall pick in the draft, it can hurt judgment at times because you, you think, okay, I got the number one overall pick. Like, how often do you get this? Unless you're the Cleveland Cavaliers without LeBron. I better hit a home run with this pick. But sometimes there is no, you know, home run or grand slam in the draft. Sometimes the best available pick, even at number one, is just a good double off the wall that scores two runs. If you consider Jason Tatum that or someone like that. And I think Wendell Carter Jr. and Jaron Jackson Jr. Are, fit that description. And I'd be afraid. I'm not saying you don't take eight and number one. I just don't think it's a slam dunk, so to speak. Because I would be concerned that the wish casting, you know, the, the desire for him to, to hit that home run with the one, number one pick, the fact that he is so big and already offensively so good, will lead a team to make a mistake. I think they should give very careful consideration to the other players I just mentioned. He's the best player taken in the draft, including Ben Simmons, in the last three years. He's a franchise player. He reminds me of the way, the way Tobias Harris is fitting on the Sixers and the way Boogie is fitting on the, on the Warriors. It's like, boy, that's the best version of what that could have been. Yeah. All the hype about Luka, he's the best version of what you could have hoped for. He's a franchise player. I love watching him play, too.